Okay, this is what happens when you get pure water down. Obviously oil floats on water so it tins out the fuel that's already in the bowl. And um, it's going mental. Getting smoky as well. And uh, you know, I don't want to be around it. You can hear it doing its best to kind of evaporate that water. But it's been boring, lovely and clean for ages now. And then gets a heap of water into it. And I could see the water. And you can hear it there. Yeah, the joys of experimentation. Yeah, just pure water coming out of that much. See? Okay, that's the end of it today now. That water's going to get down there, unless it evaporates out. Okay, so... I'm not sure if you can see into the, uh, the actual pot. It's just pure water. Black in the glass on me. And we got it up to nearly 60. So, I mean, that's plenty hot for me. And uh, as I say, I really don't have the fuel now, so I'll have to get some more. Um, see if I can get some vegetable oil next time. Uh, sands water, you know, so. So there you go. Bit of drama. Hopefully that uh, Pyrex dish survives the, uh, the thingy. You know, the little experience, episode, whatever. And even with all of that, no smoke. Of course, <laughs> maybe steam because water doesn't burn. But there you go. Uh, 60 degree water, thereabouts. Are we? Almost. 58. Um, we've got 100 and. Do you see it? 165, 167, something like that there. Going into the tank, 161. And the wind is blowing at me there, 59, 70 something. 150, that's what it was. So you can see that. Okay. So, yeah, success. I mean, it's been a great a great little uh, burner. Uh, that's probably as far as I can take this particular type of burner now. What I was planning on doing was um, maybe trying a different burner. Um, you know, where I add air. And um, then I can regulate, you know, if I can add as much oil as I want. And, and, um, and you know complement it with the right amount of air to get a clean burn. Um, different sort of burner. This this setup works absolutely brilliantly, um, you know, for, for gravity. You know, straight out of a bucket, you know, there's that mess in there, so that's, that's got to go. Gravity, no fans, no pumps, no hydraulics, um, you know, no compressors. You know, and essentially no solenoids, nothing. It's just, it is what it is. It's very crude. Uh, but you know what, it works really well. It's like an open fire or something. You just light it and kind of give the heat somewhere to go. Now, if it's into a stove or if it's into, um, you know, there's a, that's the back of the, the first stove I used, but it, it has a crack in it here. And, um, you know, I didn't want to use it domestically anymore. And this is the, the stove that I made and, what I might do is, what I might do with this is to um, introduce, you know, a fan and all that sort of stuff because it, it lends itself, you know, it didn't cost anything to make, so I can just kind of burn holes or cut holes, drill holes, whatever, anywhere I want. So uh, that's it. So that may be part of the next, the next little experimentation. Um, but the, the main reason for checking out the boiler with the, um, the, the hot water storage tank was that tank represents a heating system. You know, if, if it can absorb 20 kilowatts, you know, to raise its temperature, uh, you know, to 60, 70, 80 degrees, whatever it is, well, then it can do that for a heating system as well. And that was like, you know, so with the addition of a pump, you know, like this guy here, circulation pump, and, um, you know, 
pipes connected into a heating system, radiators, underfloor heating, whatever, uh, and a domestic storage tank. It's possible to, you know, to heat a, I don't know, reasonable size house, I suppose. And that's with a 70,000 BTU boiler. Uh, I mean, it's nothing stopping uh, that particular burner unit, maybe with slightly larger holes, doing, um, you know, 120,000 BTU boiler. No problem. Um, I think for the next experimentation, though, the, the next little kind of thing I do, what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, I think I'm going to add a fan. I have a couple of burner units here. I'm going to rob a fan, um, like a squirrel cage fan. Uh, take one of them off, one of the burners I've got, and um, and then add fuel. Um, maybe use this boiler. I, I'll do something anyway. So it'll be into one of the items that you've already seen in uh, previous videos. Uh, maybe the cast iron stove. But, um, but anyway, as I say, I, I'm... I'm going to do that with um, mechanically now next time. So this one was just gravity, and uh, as the hot air rose up the flue, it uh, it pulled in more air behind it, and uh, that air mixed the fuel, and, and off it went. I mean, it's a good system, um, not perfect, but good. Um, you could certainly, you know, be warm with it, which which is great. You know, um, I said in a previous video, if you were sitting somewhere in the cold, well, it would be great to have one of these if you did have an amount of oil. Um, uh, that particular um, stove over there, you know, co cost nothing to make. Propane tank and a bit of time, you know, angle grinder or whatever. Maybe a couple of angle grinder discs. So minimum charge or minimum cost rather, and uh, and it's great. Uh, that I mean, that thing produced a savage amount of heat. And this, the whole system. It, I suppose the heart of the whole unit is this uh, this waste oil burner. Uh, based on Ozard, and again, big thanks to Spike in Australia because I wouldn't have, you know, I, I wouldn't have started any of this if I hadn't seen his setup. And uh, <laughs> yo, Spike, you're the man. Well done. Um, but anyway, I've, I've had great fun um, because of him and be because of the videos, you know, people sharing and uploading videos on YouTube. So I thought maybe, you know, I'd, I'd throw something back. But um, yeah, I've really enjoyed messing around with it. So, I mean, this is as crude as anything. As I said, all of this is prototypes. You know, this may go on a skip afterwards, I'm not sure. Um, but in, in any case, there we go. The, the, uh, the temperature, you know, what was in the boiler and whatever after it went out, raised to about just a little over 60. So, you know, that's fantastic. So now I've got, um, I'll just plug this out. Okay, so that's it. We use a different type of plug uh, in the UK and Ireland to the rest of Europe, and, to, and actually to the, um, I don't know if there, anywhere else on the planet uses that type of plug, but that's uh, that's what we use, uh, three pin plug. So that's it. Um, I'll go over it again. There's a pump, it's pumping this way. There's the arrow into the uh, the bottom of the the bottom of the boiler comes out as hotter water flows along here goes through here loses its heat in a big coil inside that cylinder comes out the bottom and off it goes again this is an open vented expansion pipe it just goes up and over in and into that tank that tank there is just uh, full of water and it keeps this system from drying out and, and uh, you know, if it's full of water and circulating, it won't produce steam as long as I keep it under, you know, obviously 100 degrees C or 212 Fahrenheit. Um, and that's it. Okay, so one um, of the problems with messing around with dirty black oil is, um, you know, I ended up with some dirty black oil stains um, on my shed floor. Um, as I say, it, it's a shed, but um, what I will do is, I, you know, uh, sometime soon, maybe in spring, or, you know, when the weather gets a bit warmer here, I'll, um, I'll clear out the shed and uh, paint the floor, which would be good. So, and that's it. Okay, that's all I've got to show you for now. Um, keep in touch. Um, there will be more videos soon. And, 
thanks for all the support. It's been really, really great. I, I've really enjoyed it, and uh, uh, I enjoy doing this sort of stuff and sharing it on YouTube and that. So, okay, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Bye.